Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. All right, folks, welcome to the Grim Leftovers Program with your host, Grimnir. That's me. It is Monday, April 15, 2019, or as some people like to call it, Tax Day, or maybe Taxation is Theft Day, or uh, Grab Your Ankles, Bend Over and Grab Your Ankle Day. Uh, one, one of those days, I'm not sure exactly, but uh, either way, have fun with all that, those of you that play that game. Yes, indeedy. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, it's Monday, like I said. Anyway, we're live on all the various places where RLM Radio goes out live. And uh, that is on realliberty.org, freedomsnetwork.com, rlmradio.xyz, reallibertymedia.com, Spreaker, oh, internet radio, tune in, uh, just all kinds of places. We're out there, and we're glad to be out there. Hopefully, you're all having a good day. Uh, let me tell you right here where I am. It's it's a, it's a nice day. It's it's seventy or low seventies. It's very dry out, and uh, just having a you know just a very comfortable day. So uh, hopefully you are all having a decent day wherever you happen to be. Anyway, uh, I got a good, bunch of good stories lined up for you uh, once again here on this. Uh, what is it, the 18th episode? I do believe, yeah, episode 18 of of the Grim Leftovers show on the 16th week of 2019. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy some of these stories or maybe find them useful. I don't know. Whatever. These are the stories I, I didn't get to, or we, I should say, myself and the Mighty Moose Girl, didn't get to on the Freakers Ball show. And uh, that's that's what this show's all about is sharing those those stories, and uh, you know they tend to be the older stories in my list, but uh, some of these are not not really all that old. A few weeks, uh, kind of zipping through stories these days. Lately, we we covered a lot on last week's uh, Freakers Ball, but uh, plenty left over. <laughs> hey, leftover? How about that? Grim leftovers? Yeah, indeed. All right, well, let's kick it off right here on uh, LouRockwell.com. Wait, quit moving around on me over there. Uh, LouRockwell.com. Oh, let me say hi to all the folks. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate that sound check. Uh, anyway, let me say hi to all the folks here in the Real Liberty Media chat. We got the barman and the beetle and Mr. Cowboy Tech and myself in the Mighty Moose Girl. We got Miss Kate in D.C., Asmodeus, Beth Z, Chalcedony, Echelon, Gram Z, I be Don C, uh, Java Doctor, Meister Brow, Rain, Rob Works, Roams in uh, the Vanna White and Weathered Orc Pots. We got the Phantom in Smith Circle. And we got uh, Colfax in Cyborg Noodle in Dakota and Flash. Somebody. We got Frumpy, too. <laughs> we got Gromit in JJ's. And uh, Kozu, uh, crazy Karl Marx bot, man. That, that's a crazy ass bot. Yeah, if you're not in the Real Liberty Media chat and you come on over into the Real Liberty Media chat and you see somebody named Karl Marx, it's not a human. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a really weird bot. He'll just come out with just odd sayings, but possibly useful as well. We got Kiss and Pondergander, Pone Sauce, Sock Puppet, Salamo, uh, Vinny Cuss, Vinny Cuss, Cuss Out Vinny, and uh, W4DKV, a.k.a. Anti- <laughs> All right, I think we're good there. Uh, uh, <laughs> and there's other people out there listening. We got people in other channels listening, and I'm not even gonna mention those channels. But hi and howdy to y'all, whoever, wherever you uh, may be. So uh, yeah, and and also people that are not on the site listening in. So uh, maybe from other countries as well. We know we got some Canucks and and possibly some are Europeans and possibly some South Americans. Yep. Anyway, here we go. LouRockwell.com from March 21st here. Posted up here by Thomas Luango. Under the Gold Goats and Guns heading. Gold Goats and Guns. Alrighty then. Censorship tightens as governments lose control. 
<laughs> I love that. Government's losing control. Governments have lost control of the narrative uh, that they are in control of events. Every day I wake up to another instance of outrageous censorship from some social media company blocking or banning someone for no apparent reason. The last latest outrage is Twitter banning the account of WikiLeaks publisher Julian Assange's mother. Not Assange, but his mother, Christine. Yep, Australia, Australian and New Zealand ISPs have gone bonkers IP blocking sites in the wake of the Christchurch massacre. Sites like Zero Hedge have been targeted in the past two weeks for the publishing narratives. Orthogonal? Orthogonal? What is that word? Hang on a second. Let me, let me, let me, just give me an orthogonal. Of in, of or involving right angles. Okay. So, uh, at right angles to what the government in the West are comfortable with people consuming. First it was Facebook blocking and then unblocking Zero Hedge with no apparent reasoning behind it. Now it's ISPs overreacting to emotional uh, an emotional event, ensuring that a good crisis never goes to waste. And these ISPs are going much farther than just avoiding the potential legal liabilities. They are now openly calling for, for platforms themselves, Twitter, Facebook, etc., be regulated by governments to stop the dangerous information from reaching the eyeballs of consumers. And another mask is ripped off, revealing the ugly totalitarians underneath. It begins with legitimizing, deplatforming people. Yes, le legitimizing the deplatforming. Oh boy. Gotta love that wordage. Uh, uh, people like Alex Jones and social media companies like Gab uh, because some speech is, well, just too free. You know, it's free speech within boundaries and then smaller boundaries and then smaller boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> These are, are people supposedly too fringe to be suffered and to be dealt with by the general public. So it's easy to whip up some public support. And by the way, whenever you hear the word public, just make sure you replace that word with the word government. Public equals government. You, you may think, oh, public, no, that's just people. No, no, it's not. Anyway, uh, whip up some public support for censorship of them alongside a one-sided media bombardment of of justify to justify uh, their silencing with a large swath of people are you now or have you ever been it's especially easy to do this after having whipped everyone into two camps of highly polarized and radicalized camps across multiple political vectors trumps versus liberals in the united states remainers versus leavers in the uk open borders versus immigration control across the West, global warming alarmist versus skeptics. It says here in Europe, but I'm going to go a little bit further. Hey, Gary L., thanks for joining us. Um, <laughs> gun control versus American deplorables. I could go on and on. All of these false dualities, false divides, are meant to drive us, you and I, into two camps and act as a barrier to communication and as a shit lib I guess that's what they're trying to say there but they put a little fancy character in there to make it so it wasn't just directly the word shit lib as a, <laughs> as a shit lib uh, are, are you more or less willing to suffer an argument for free speech if it comes from a deplorable <laughs> We all know the answer to that question. And vice versa is also equally true. Deplorables don't want to deal with Trump's shortcomings as president because it's a betrayal of MAGA. Make no mistake, this polarization of electorates all around the world was planned. 
Oh, no doubt about that. It's part and parcel of the divide of conquer, uh, the divide and conquer strategy, which preps the rhetor rhetorical ground preceding color revolutions. If it begins with deplatforming Alex Jones, it ends with what we're seeing today. Now it's no longer banning Alex Jones because he supposedly harassed families of Sandy Hook's uh, Sandy Hook victims. Now it's jailing people for sharing the video of the Christchurch madman self-aggrandized video. Oh, I should, I should, I, 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 there was a story today where they've, they've uh, arrested 14 people um, for sharing that video. Um, it's, 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 it, was a, it was a news story, so it didn't make it into today's cut. Anyway, catching up with Zero Hedge in this censorship net makes it obvious that this was the plan of action waiting for the catalyst to set in motion. Since Zero Hedge never once hosted the Christchurch video, less than a week after the Facebook mistakenly banned us uh, from Zero Hedge, uh, for two days with no explanation, following several reports which were critical of the social media giant, we learned that Zero Hedge has now been uh, banned in New Zealand and Australia, despite the fact that we never hosted the video footage of the Christchurch church attack. We were, not, uh, we were not contacted prior to the censorship. Instead, we have received a steady flow of people noting that the site is unavailable in the two countries unless a VPN is used. And by the way, if you need a VPN, go check the uh, front page there of reallibertymedia.com and you'll see a link to a VPN provider, the one that I use, by the way. So, uh, yeah, you have to turn your ad blocker off on Real Liberty Media. So uh, do that and, and check that out. And, uh, yeah, get yourself a good VPN. Simply put, this is the next escalation in the censorship war against the alternative press, the truth press, and citizen journalism. It's for the children. <laughs> the steady stream of drivel, and we know all about drivel here at Real Liberty Media in the chat room. We have, we have daily drivel times when certain folk come to visit us. Yeah. Anyway, so the steady stream of drivel from lawmakers around the world about social media regulation is in the name of protecting the people. Oh, yes, they just want to serve and protect you. Uh, now the ISPs and the platforms want to get together and police the content, police, police, giving it the veneer of private party self-control rather than the heavy-handed government censorship. Of course, we all know better, but that's nonsense. All of these companies owe their existence in either to direct government investment or support through government-granted franchise monopolies and other market distortions, the corruption of what you think of as a free market or capitalism, Yes, which built barriers to entry for any competition, which is the way the government works in telling you that you have a, a free market out there. Yeah, you, you don't. Telling you have capitalism. Yeah, you don't. You have corporatism. Uh, a, a, anyway, so uh, it's simply censorship by proxy. The hallmark of an end state corporist ol oligopoly. oligopoly. <laughs> but it's never, never, not once, ever about protecting the people. It's about protecting governments from the people finding out the inconvenient truth that they aren't in control of anything anymore. And they're scared to death of us using these communications tools to debunk their lies, their omissions, and their agendas in real time. Without them, there is no Brexit. There is no Trump. There is no Salvini, Orban, or Putin, frankly. Remember, they may think they're the smartest people in the room, but they are not smarter than the people collectively in the room itself. And they know this. Well, that's great, Vinny. Thank you for that. But uh, you have to go through my link in order to, uh, <laughs> in order to make that work.
<laughs> so, but but I appreciate you putting the link up in there. Um, <laughs> anyway, here's that. There's there's a little more to the story that you may want to check out there. Uh, I I think we all know pretty much most of that uh, there. But there's other links and stuff uh, involved. By the way, that particular link will be in the post show blog. Uh, sometime this evening after the show. Yes, it's very dry out, so I have to, I have to drink a bunch of water tonight. So, um, yeah, yeah. All right. Next, since we're on this already, and I, I don't I don't see uh, SLC Mike here, and well then, but if he were, he might appreciate this next story, although. He would probably be able to, to debunk it faster than I could read it. <laughs> it comes from Wired, and Wired is a well-known, uh, is well-known to be in cahoots with government and their uh, censors and spies. But here it is anyway. Utah just became a leader in digital privacy. With so much of our lives lived online, people have often assumed that their pictures, financial documents, and other sensitive information we store on our password-protected phones and computers are kept private. But every day, every single day, it seems there's a new data breach with millions, hundreds of millions of people, or another story about our information being passed around in ways we could just not imagine. As a result, there has been an emerging public distrust in the platform that holds so much of this information and increased interest by federal and state legislatures, uh, slate legislators, on how to protect the public's privacy. So far, government focus has primarily been on protecting consumer information from intrusive collection by private companies. Now, they don't want you to stop them, the government, from having access to that information, but eh, they want to seem like they're doing something. So they'll tell you, oh, we're going to protect you from these these people that are going to send you spam, which is really the least of your concern, is getting spam from a company about a, a, a from a site or a product that you visited. Yeah, that's, that's really the least of your concern. Your most of your concern is what they're not going to even bother with, which is preventing them, the government, from getting into your information. Not that they don't already have it all, but, you know. California passed sweeping legislation, so they say, in 2018 to protect consumer privacy. That same year, the Vermont legislature passed a law to regulate data brokers. Both Washington and Massachusetts are considering consumer privacy data bills. Uh, while these measures are certainly important, protecting private internet information from a law from law enforcement invasion, not just private industry, also merits urgency and with pressure from Lib Libertas Libertas Institute and the ACLU of Utah. The Utah legislature is taking steps towards that very thing. On March 12th, Utah legislators voted in unanimously to pass landmark legislation in support of a new privacy law. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it that way, <laughs> but I had to. <laughs> uh, that will protect private electronic data stored with third parties like Google or Facebook from free-range government access. This bill stipulates that the law enforcement will be required to obtain a warrant before accessing certain electronic information or data. Unlike consumer privacy laws, the bill does not give individuals the ability to see the information that companies collect on them and does not regulate how personal data is used internally. The bipartisan bill is expected to go to Governor Gary Herbert's desk for final approval next week, which that should have already passed. Uh, I mean, that, that time, I don't know if the bill was signed or not. If he signs the bill, Utah will be the first state in the nation to lawfully protect the electronic information that individuals entrust to third parties 
from the government. Yeah, yeah, that's the the banner. Either way, you gotta you gotta click the link. It's got like a little scripty thing in there. Uh, thanks, guys, for that. Really, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, on the federal level and in every state aside from Utah, law enforcement can access your information through third-party channels with no real standard of accountability. This is because the third-party doctrine, which is a legal legal theory created when the Supreme Court held that individuals have no reasonable expectation of privacy. None. No reasonable or otherwise expectation of privacy when they share their data with a third party. This means the government can access anything from innocent photographs to important medical or financial documents one might store on an app. They can access a person's information so long as the company is willing to share. And of course, they will be willing to share because if they're not willing to share, they'll be forced to be willing to share. <laughs> In the courts, third-party data protections have made some progress. Yeah, right. Last summer, the Supreme Court narrowly ruled in a Carpenter via, uh, versus United States to uphold third-party third data privacy. The five to four decision said that law enforcement could no longer access a person's cell phone uh, location data from a third-party phone provider like Verizon or ATT without first obtaining a warrant, which, of course, they just rubber stamp those warrants, but, you know. Uh, this ruling was significant, but it didn't do much beyond protecting location data, which, again, I'll get to a story on that in a second, but that's all bullshit, too. Uh, banking information, text, emails, and all other phone data, totally up for grabs. Totally up for for grabs. That's why Chief Justice John Roberts, who authored the majority opinion, encouraged state legislatures to pass their own legal protections. In his words, legislation is much preferable to the development of an entire new body of Fourth Amendment case law. Utah took his advice and did just that. And they did it right, too. So, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, they can pass all the legislation they want, but uh, when, when those, quote, intelligence, unquote, agencies uh, want your information, they're going to find a way to get it, uh, either through one of the companies you shared in your information with, or uh, voluntarily, or by, by coercion or force. That's how they work. But yeah, they said, you know, your location data, that's all good. That's all fine. But maybe not so much. <laughs> this article on TechCrunch from about three weeks ago, uh, a family tracking app was leaking real-time location data. So you don't have to worry just about them coming in and snooping and f wanting your information, forcing a company to give them your information. Some of these apps are just crap, and they leak your data. A popular family tracking app was leaking real-time locations of more than 238,000 users for weeks after, de after the developer left a server exposed with no password. The app, Family Locator, built by Australia-based software house React Apps, allows families to track each other in real time, such as spouses or parents wanting to know uh, where their children are. It also lets users set up geofenced alerts to send a notification when a family member enters or leaves a certain location. Why would you do that? Such as school or work. But the backend MongoDB database was left unprotected and accessible by anyone who knew where to look, which anybody that wants that information knows where to look. <laughs> so, Sanyam Jain, a security researcher, a member of the GDI Foundation, found the database and reported the findings to TechCrunch. Based on a review of the database, each account uh, record contained a user's name and email address, profile photo, and plain text passwords. Not even hashed passwords. 
These were not encrypted at all. Just your password sitting out there, just like you just typed it on a screen for them to read. Each account also kept a record of their own and other family members' real-time locations precise to a few feet. Any user who had a geofence set up also had those coordinates stored in the database, along with what the user called them, such as home or work. None of that data was encrypted. <laughs> All right, uh, I think you get the point of that story. Uh, the, the thing, what you, you have to be really careful about what apps you use, what apps you download. If you're you're using something like that, it's it's a, a smartphone type thing, so you're going to carry it around with you, and it's going to track where you're at. I don't know why you would want that personally. I can't I can't imagine wanting somebody to know where I am at every second of every day. It's ridiculous. But I guess some people like that. Some people want that. I, I don't know. But uh, when you download what should be a reliable, respected, good app onto your phone, whether it be a tracking app or not, because lots of apps use the GPS location in your cell phone for various things, you don't know if somebody at that company is going to mess up, just plainly mess up and 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 unlock a, a database that can be used for nefarious purposes, not by them, but by, by somebody that finds that open door and says, well, hey, <laughs> look what we got here. We know where this pe where these people are in this family at all the time, so we know when they're not home, we can go and break in during that time. Uh, we know where their cars are going to be or uh, wh whatever, whatever the possible th bad things they might want to do, uh, they can do with that kind of information. So I, I would say if, if you have a cell phone that has a GPS on it, which most people do have those, um, shut it off. You could shut that GPS tracking off on your phone. Just Just turn it off. You don't need it. Nobody nobody needs to know where you are all the time. That, that's crazy. It's insane. <laughs> all right, this article from Russia Today, uh, RT.com, uh, back on uh, 15th of December, 2018. I think this number should be higher. Actually, a lot higher. Factor of 10, maybe. But here it is. Global debt hits all-time high of $184 trillion. <laughs> the world's debt currently exceeds 86000 U.S. dollars per person on average. According to the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, uh, the U.S., China, and Japan are the top three global borrowers, accounting for more than half of the global debt. The IMF has calculated that their share of the debt exceeds that of output. It is st it's stated that, that the emergence of China among the top grow top ranking, however, relatively new development. Since the beginning of the millennium, China's share in global debt surged from less than 3% to over 15%, underscoring the rapid credit surge in the aftermath of the global financial crisis. According to the IMF, global debt has reached a record high $184 trillion in nominal terms. That's the equivalent of 225% of the world GDP. So whatever the world's making, you got to multiply that two and a quarter times. <laughs> uh, this debt figure uh, is $2 trillion higher than the estimated number released by the fund in October because it includes the debts of several countries who had not previously reported their updated data. And so we don't know how many, how much of the current data is actually current and correct. Uh, either way, so you, you sitting out there as a human living within a country somewhere, um, your share, your fair share of that debt is $86,000. Just make your checks payable 
to uh, Mr. Rothschilds, and, and he will gladly accept your payment. Of course, as soon as you do that, you'll you'll be further more in debt, even if you pay your your fair share. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here's that link for you. All right. Now, do you like ham? I like ham. What about bacon? Bacon? You like bacon? Sausage? Pork chops? Various other pork products? Not not even necessarily just pork. But we'll go that way right now because this revealed there is no need to add cancer risk nitrates nitrites excuse me to ham confidential confidential meat industry report shows additives do not prevent food poisoning i suppose it's not confidential any longer since i'm here reading it to you and this came out <laughs> when did this come out 23rd of march the bombshell internal report written for the British meat industry reveals nitrates do not protect you against botulism. The chief reason ham and bacon manufacturers say they started using the chemicals in the first place and continue using them to this day. There's no reason for that stuff to be in there. The study conducted for the British Meat Processors Association, the BMPA, by the scientific consultancy Campton and marked confidential, examines the growth of... Uh, I, I love it when it says marked confidential, and here I am reading it to you. Anyway, uh, off, of a, off of a global website. <laughs> examines the growth of the toxin Clostridium botulinum, the botulism. In the, in the processing of bacon and ham. It is understood that the paper seen by the observer was commissioned to provide evidence that nitrates, which have long been linked to cancer, are essential to protect consumers from food poisoning, in particular botulism, a potentially fatal disease. But in what appears to be a major blow to the industry's claim, the research found that there's no significant growth of bacteria in either the nitrite-free or nitrite-cured samples that were tested. The paper concludes the results show that there is no change in level of what's going on there. Oh, okay. Uh, no change in levels of in inoculated C. botulinum over the curing process, which implies that the action. The action of a nitrite during the curing is not toxic to C. botulinum spores at levels of 150 parts per million. And in going nitrate in nitrate in below, it is illegal to add nitrates at levels above 150 parts per million due to health concerns. Research has linked nitrates when added to meat, which is then cooked and ingested to the development of cancer-triggering chemicals in the stomach. The leaked internal report is highly embarrassing for the processed meat industry. Yeah, you know, I would think they'd be glad. Well, if this we, we're, we're, we're buying this stuff and putting it in there, we don't have to buy it anymore. That's what this is telling me. Why? I mean, okay, maybe it's embarrassing because you've been doing it for so long, blind, just blindly, but... Hey, stop putting that poison in there. Anyway, so uh, so the, the processed meat industry and for the food standards a agencies, which have persistently peddled the myth that nitrites are essential to protect against botulism, according to uh, Baroness Walmsley, the vice chair of parliament, uh, all party, parliament's all party group on cancer, all party group, well, that sounds like a good group to be a part of, an all-party group. Anyway, on the contrary, this report reveals that nitrites are not a controlling factor against the botulism. This evidence raises serious questions about why nitrates are being added to our bacon and ham and, and other 
pork products and hot dogs and oh all kinds of various stuff uh, Labor's deputy leader Tom Watson said this damning report demonstrates there is no longer any need for the processed eat meat industry to be adding cancer causing nitrites couldn't you have found a better way to begin with than adding cancer causing chemicals to people's food we need to see the removal of nitrites from our food as soon as possible I agree with you whoever you are labor deputy leader Tom Watson all right <laughs> Rome's is talking about something I don't think he's talking to me all right producers also use the nitrites as it keeps the bacon and ham pink for longer thus more attractive can to consumers well you know I'd rather have a little brown on the meat than I than I would have the uh, cancer causing elements in, in, in infecting it however it is in a sign that consumers are becoming more aware about the threat posed by nitrites uh, several companies including Nestle oh, horrible company and Finnebrogue never heard of them now sell ham and bacon produced without nitrites experts say the BMPA's confidential research adding added to a growing body of evidence making the case against using nitrites so there you have it they don't need to put the poison in your food they just do they just do all right and uh, I don't see goober here but he might enjoy this story I don't know Apparently, there's a big asteroid out there called Bennu, B-E-N-N-U. Bennu asteroid is chock full of alien tech, according to a UFO hunter. Yes, according to the UFO hunter, the surface of the space rock is dotted with buildings, towers, pyramids, and even some abandoned spaceships which have probably uh, been abandoned there for millions of years. A new photo of Bennu asteroid, which was snapped by NASA's OSIRIS-REx probe and recently released by the space agency, might have spawned yet another conspiracy theory. Now, I hope you're all wearing your tinfoil hats. I, I keep mine on at all times. And uh, it's an extra heavy-duty industrial strength tinfoil hat that I use. Uh, so, uh, so it spawned yet another conspiracy theory as dedicated UFO hunter Scott C. Waring detected alleged presence of alien technology on the space rock surface while examining the image. Detailing his findings in his blog, UFO Sightings Daily, Waring noted that the asteroid is littered with rocks the picture also shows certain black or silver objects which are more interesting than NASA wants you to know. NASA don't want you to know. Never a straight answer. These structures on asteroid Bennu and show buildings, towers, pyramids, and even some abandoned ships, all of which look a bit beaten up since they have probably been abandoned on this asteroid for millions of years. Nevertheless, they still exist and they are uh, and, and are here are the, the close-ups to prove it. Earlier this month, Waring also uh, claimed that he discovered an object which looks like an alien base after studying a NASA photo of the lunar surface. Now, if you all remember, uh, last week, a, the Israelis were trying to land a, a probe there on the moon and suddenly it failed on, on, on its landing approach. Maybe these guys in the, the, this alien base on the moon, you know, they, they didn't take too kindly to some Israelis coming there to steal all their money. I mean, um, oh, yeah, that's what I mean. Never mind. <laughs> However, uh, of course, that I don't know that aliens use money, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> However, NASA argued that Waring's discovery was a product of periodolia? What? Per, periodolia. I don't know how to say that. 
a f psychological phenomenon where people see recognizable shapes in clouds, rock formations, or otherwise unrelated data or objects, like like the face on Mars. That NASA will tell you, no, no, that doesn't exist. No, that's that's para para whatever that word is, paradolia. <laughs> Banu, <laughs> ben, what's his, what's his name? Uh, ben, ben, Benu Netanyahu. <laughs> oh, I got to give you this because it, it's it's some good propaganda for you, and you never know when you might need to have this information if somebody attacks you for being a doper, a pothead. A lowly stoner? You might need the information here because this is what they'll be using as their argument. So you may want to take this information in this next article from WTOP.com. Uh, study it a little bit and, and understand how to fire back at them. Unless you already do, which I would assume most people that enjoy the herb uh, probably already understand how to how to fire back at these Looney Tunes that insist that marijuana's got to do terrible things. The article. Daily consumption of marijuana may have serious mental consequences. <laughs> marijuana, still illegal under federal law, is now legal, fully, fully legal, they say, which of course is far from the truth. It's not fully legal anywhere on this planet. Um, it's fully regulated. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, is now fully legal in 10 states and Washington, D.C. Uh, some cities have stopped prosecuting people for possession of marijuana in small amounts. Huh. They've stopped uh, prosecuting people for possession of marijuana in small amounts. That hardly sounds fully legal. Some states have legalized it and have everything from medical marijuana to on-demand recreational, recreational cannabis delivery. Yeah, just call Domino's. I, I, want, a, I want a pizza in, in a quarter ounce, please. <laughs> but new research published in Lancet Psychiatry is a bit of a buzzkill. Researchers looked at over 900 people with first-time psychotic episodes, the mental health conditions in which people lose touch with reality. You mean they become statists? Oh. Across Europe and Brazil, they compared them to people without psychotic disorders, and the results were surprising. According to this article, anyway. <laughs> Uh, the study found that daily cannabis users were more than three times as likely to end up with a psychotic reaction, uh, psychotic, psychotic disorder diagnosis compared to people who had never had it. Psychotic disorder diagnosis. Huh. Not necessarily a psychotic disorder, but a diagnosis of a psychotic disorder. And, without doubt, the psychiatrists or whatever doctors they were speaking to asked them about their marijuana usage and figured, well, these guys are using weed. We can automatically dismiss them as psychotics. Thanks, Vinny. The study found that daily... Can oh, I already read that. Uh, three out of 100 people will experience psychosis at some time in their lives uh, in general, according to the National Institute of Mental Health. And, and, and you, so they're saying nine people out of 100 will, if they smoke weed, the devil's lettuce. But psychosis, after regular marijuana use, is not common. And not everybody thinks cannabis is so bad. No, it's not so bad. It's so great. It's not bad at all. 
It's wonderful. ABC News spoke with Dr. Corey Jackass, Jackass? I don't know how you say his name, a board-certified medical physician who conducts evaluations and prescribes medical marijuana in Fairfield, Connecticut. Jackez became interested in medical cannabis out of a desire to help veterans with PTSD, especially the ones for whom existing medications failed. I've only had a handful of instances where patients had psychotic symptoms in the last six years, he explained. They were mostly people with other psychiatric illnesses who thought they could stop their meds and manage it with cannabis. But for those who benefit from cannabis, the benefit is significant. They can do a 180. I took care of a veteran that had to drop out of college because her PTSD was so bad. With cannabis, she returned to college and showed up to my office smiling the day she got into law school. Robin Murray is a professor at the Institute of Psychiatry at King's College in London and the author of Lance, Lancet Psychiatric Study. Regular marijuana use is not what it used to be, Murray told ABC. I've been a psychiatrist since the 70s, but I didn't care about cannabis until the 2000s. We've seen a lot more psychotic people smoking cannabis. Okay, that I will buy. You have psychotic people smoking cannabis. You don't have cannabis causing psychosis. You can't say <laughs> one from the other. Anyway, it's all nonsense. It's all, it's all, it's all propaganda. It's all lies. Uh, but you may want to, like I said, look through it and and understand it. So when certain people come after you and say, "Oh, that marijuana stuff, that's really bad. That cannabis, oh, don't do that. Uh, CBD's even gonna get you, even though there's there's no THC in that. Yep, they're gonna gonna come after anything uh, th that is not approved by their government masters but on another story about marijuana apparently according to a markets insider on march 18th marijuana is the fastest growing industry in the united states job market how about that the U.S. added 64,389 full-time legal cannabis jobs in 2018, according to the Renew report. That outpaces growth in other sectors in the job market. The job openings in the cannabis industry have also surged. Forget the energy industry. Marijuana appears to be the fastest growth job sector in the U.S., the U.S. added 64,389 full-time legal cannabis jobs in 2018, according to the new report from the cannabis website Leafly and the consultancy Whitney Economics that represented a 44% increase in total positions, which rose to 211,000 marijuana jobs. And that's not counting jobs indirectly related to the marijuana industry, like lawyers, accountants, security consultants, media companies, and marketing firms. With those included, the report said there were 296,000 payrolls in the sector last year. The report estimated that jobs in the industry would grow by at least 110% from 2017 through 2020, outpacing what are often seen as the top sectors for comparison. The, the uh, report noted the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics projections for 105% growth in solar panel installations uh, and uh, positions and 47% growth in home health care positions over a much longer 10-year period from 2016 to 2026. Because marijuana remains illegal under federal law, the BLS does not report employment figures for the industry. The report authors use state data and industry figures to reach its estimates. While the marijuana industry faces significant legal uncertainty, it has made headway in recent years. Recreational marijuana 
has been legalized by 10 states and D.C. And across the U.S., there are uh, other signs that the industry is booming. Job openings in the cannabis cannabis industry listed on the careers site Glassdoor rose to 1,512 last year from 858 in 2017. So, you know, you like weed, you might as well help people grow it, harvest it, test it. Hey, I want to be a tester. <laughs> just just send me the bag. I'll tell you how well it's working. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. All right. This is a, this next story is another one Goober would love. And yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's fine, too. Uh, this is posted on SputnikNews.com. Um, posted up there on March 23rd. Turbo Lover. Owner reveals sex doll Harmony's new vaginal sensor AI upgrade. <laughs> oh, man, you gotta love it. The doll's sensor effectively allows the doll to react to sex providing data to its app, which essentially tells the sex box head uh, which response to give. Brick Doll Banger. (laughs) The owner of the first Harmony sex doll uh, model in the world has announced that the robot's new X-Mode app now allows it to actually mimic human behavior. As uh, Brick Doll Banger explained... To the newspaper, he intends to demonstrate the doll's new upgrade live on Facebook. You know, I I don't think I want to see that live on Facebook or... Yeah, no. Uh, Noting that his audience asks a lot of mundane questions about... and, and sexual questions. According to him, the doll's new vaginal sensor reacts to sex and sends responses to the doll's app which in turn sends the appropriate responses to the robotic head to be vocalized. Like a, ooh, baby, that's the spot. <laughs> now, <laughs> now they have developed a vaginal uh, sensor for inserts they put into the doll, uh, the robotic body, and now as you thrust into the sensor, when you're having sex with the doll, the sensor is a reactive strip that sends the stimuli to the brain to tell it how deep you're going or how hard you're going and what what, what, and and how would you feel if it said is it in yet (laughs) oh and how hard you're thrusting doll banger explained yeah, I'm sure that's... Uh, I, I don't think he was born with that name. Anyway, in December, a senior technical specialist at software and computer chip firm Synopsys uh, warned, however, that hackers hackers may gain access to the personal data about people's relationship with their sex robots. Just as activity with certain brands of smart sex toys have been compromised before, yeah, that's 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 something you really want is to uh, get your sex doll being hacked. Yeah, yeah, that's something. That's something. That's yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. This next story. It's not really a story. It's it's a reference. It's a reference page that you may want to use in the future. Maybe not. Because who really cares what they want and what they don't want? And they, I mean the gun grabbers, it specifies here Democrats, but there's a lot of people that may possibly not be Democrats that are also gun grabbers. People like the NRA that you think are are gun advocates. They're not gun right advocates. They are gun grabbers. Every major law that restricts or controls guns, ownership, usage, and such, the NRA has been right there. 
hand in hand, if not directly behind, pushing the legislation. You think the NRA is out there to protect you. They are not. Far, far from it. Anyway, this article on TomDishaw.com, which says, and I, I suggest you follow his advice, bookmark this. 400 gun and ammo sites the Democrats don't want you to visit. So whether or not you think it's Democrats, it's whatever. Make no mistake, the Democrats are coming for your guns. It's not going to be in one clean swoop like the mandatory gun buyback program in Australia because that would lead to a civil war. And which I again I, I have a, I have I have problems picturing how a civil war would work at this point in time. I mean, I understand that the first United States civil war was between geographically differentiated people or places. But at this point, who would it be? I mean, how, how are you going to tell uh, who you're fighting against? <laughs> I, don't know. I, I mean, because they, I, everybody, I mean, it's all intermingled now. Anyway, uh, this roundup will be slow and incremental, and it starts with the limitation of information, which we've seen a great deal of going on. As most know, Google is the information gatekeeper for about 75% of the world. It's also a well-known fact that Google hates guns, and they will do anything to destroy publishers and businesses that dare to uphold the Second Amendment. And again, Second Amendment, who cares? You have a natural right as a human being to protect yourself in whatever manner you deem necessary using whatever tools that you can find. And and when I say protect yourself, I don't just mean about the guy that wants to take your wallet, take your identity, steal your car, break into your house. I mean against those people that think they have the authority to tell you what to and what not to do. That's the real people that are bad. I mean, the other guys that want to take your stuff personally, they're they are not good either. But, you know, yeah, you, you can probably still protect yourself against them. But you need to be able to protect yourself against them government types. This is why this article is so important. Google can continue to suppress all the sites listed below, but they can't suppress this page if you bookmark it in your browser. That is how we're going to win this war. Listed below are 400 pro Second Amendment websites offering valuable information in regards to firearms, ammo, gunsmithing, hunting news, hunting, news, and much more. By no means is this list complete. I'm sure there are hundreds of great sites that I missed. If so, please please feel free to mention them in the comments, and I will be sure to add them uh, to this list. So anyway, they have all kinds of sites here. Uh, Ring dot, I don't know, 10 ring.com, 50 BMG ammo, 1911 addicts. Uh, there's a bunch of 1911 stuff. I guess that's something. I don't know what that is. A1 hunting supply, uh, able ammo, ammo man, arms vault, battle box. I'm, I'm just kind of skimming through a few, hitting a few names there. Black Hills ammunition, Blue Ridge firearms, bullet from Meister Bullets. I wonder if that's Meister Brow's site. Meister Bullets. <laughs> We got Cascade Ammo, Cal Guns, Cheaper Than Dirt. I've been to that site. They've got some good deals on there. I like Cheaper Than Dirt. Uh, whatever, Cimarron Firearms, Cowboy Store. Uh, I don't think it's Cowboy Tech Store. Uh, Fowler Gun and Machine Shop, uh, First Defense, Firearms Training, Guns and Ammo, Guns.com. Uh, just, just all kinds of sites. I, I'm not going to go further down the list. Like I said, there's 400 names here on, on this particular list. So you check it out and uh, do what you will with it. But uh, yeah, it seems like a good one to bookmark to me. So um, anyway, that'll wrap it up here for the Grim Leftovers for today. I'll be back again next Monday with uh, episode 19 of the Grim Leftovers. And I'll be back on Friday night without the Moose Girl. 
because she's uh, going dancing or something along those lines at a concert. And so it'll be balls to the wall. Basically still Freaker's Ball, just with a little harder edge. Uh, tomorrow you got uh, Flash Somebody at 1 p.m. Eastern. Grammy is back on Wednesday after her nice weekend off at her normal time, 7 p.m. Eastern. And then just check the schedule there on reallibertymedia.com for the rest. Thank you all so much for tuning in and being part of Real Liberty Media and being part of the show. Appreciate it. Love y'all. Peace.